Welcome to Unreal Engine Editor. Now, the first part of Unreal Engine Editor that we're going to look at is called the viewport. This is uh, this is the viewport right here. It takes a look out into your 3D world. Now, if you just move your cursor around Unreal Engine viewport, you can see that you can select objects by clicking on them somewhere in the viewport. For example, if I had a sphere in here, I could uh, manipulate and interact with those objects through the viewport. If you hold down the right mouse button whilst your cursor is within the viewport somewhere, you will be able to turn the camera around and actually look around your 3D environment. Now, if you have ever played a first person shooter before, you'll probably be familiar with the W, A, S, and D keys. Uh, w, A, S, and D will walk you forward, walk you back, strafe left and strafe right. Now you have to be holding down the right mouse button in order for these hotkeys to actually work. If you just press W, A, S, D without uh, holding down the right mouse button, nothing will happen. So you're going to want to hold down the right mouse button in order to activate that camera rotation mode. And then you can walk around with W, A, S, and D. Now you can also press Q to go down and you can press E to go up. So E will take you up, the E key will move your camera up, and the Q key will move your camera down. So with all those interactions, forward, back, left, and right, and looking around, you can basically cruise around your 3D world. Additionally, instead of moving around with the W, A, S, and D keys, you can also left click to rotate the camera. And if you press the mouse forward or backward, you'll be able to move around within the viewport that way as well. So you can uh, choose what you like best. Uh, another thing that you'll notice is that whilst I'm cruising around, I am cruising at a certain set fixed speed. Let's say you want to increase or decrease this speed. You can do so with this camera speed slider right here. So let's slide that up to 44. This is probably going to be pretty fast, but there we go. Now I'm moving at a much, much faster speed. And you might need to do that if you're traversing over a large environment. The same is true if you're moving over micro environments. You might want to slow down that camera speed so that you don't uh, travel too quickly. One great little hotkey that I use all the time, I actually don't really use the slider much myself because I just use the hotkey, is the mouse scroller wheel. Whilst you have your right mouse button held down within the viewport, this only works if you have your right mouse button held down within the viewport, mind you. So whilst your right mouse button is held down, if you scroll up or scroll down, that will also increase or decrease the speed at which the camera moves. So scroll down, you can set the speed to much slower, scroll up, you can set the speed to much, much faster. If you need to move even faster still, you can also multiply the camera speed scalar value. So for example, right now, the maximum value is 320, which is actually gonna be more than fast enough. But let's say I wanted to increase that, I could go times 10, and now the maximum speed is 3200, which is way too fast. Now I've zoomed away from the entire world and lost lost where I was at. This actually brings us into some other nice hotkey shortcuts for moving around the viewport. If you've ever played a real-time strategy game, you may have at some point saved a viewport location with the control plus a number key. So for example, let's make a marker right here in our viewport. I'll just drop a little sphere in here so we can save our point. And I'm gonna press on my keyboard control plus number one. Now you can do this with control 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, all the way up to 0 to save a viewport location. And now if you find yourself somewhere else in the world, all you need to do to recall that saved location is press the number key on your keyboard. So I'm going to press number 1 and I snap back to my saved viewport location. So you can save, save up to 10 locations to quickly be able to jump back to. As we also look around our viewport, you'll see a bunch of icons up here on the top. These are our various manipulator tools. To select objects, we can press the Q key to transform and rotate and move. We also have keyboard shortcuts, which are W, E, and R. You'll be using those probably quite a lot. So for example, if I was to go into my place actors and into my shapes and just grab a cube, for example, I could drag that somewhere into my viewport. And uh, actually, this cube seems to have sort of appeared halfway into the ground. That's not so good. So I might want to actually move that. So I'm going to make sure to have it selected with my selection object. 
And then I can choose the translate uh, and movement uh, tool, and I can actually just move that up from one of the arrow handles. Within the viewport, you will also notice that uh, arrows have differing colors, blue, red, and green. These correspond to the X, Y, and Z axis. These are basically uh, the vector uh, directions to move around in 3D space. So Z in this case is, uh, uh, Unreal Engine is great because it color codes our movement directions. Red is along the X axis, uh, green is along the Y, and, and Z is along the, uh, as blue is along the Z axis. So up and down, forward, back, left and right. This will become more important later once we get into blueprints and start needing to know which direction to move an object and which axis to move it along. So just to keep in mind for now that this is a thing that exists. Uh, you can also rotate an object with this uh, option right up here, the Select and Rotate Objects tool. Uh, it works the same. Also rotate on green, red, or blue axis, and all you need to do is drag and grab and rotate in such a way. Uh, the scale tool right here will allow you to manipulate objects to make them bigger or smaller. If you grab from the center uh, scaler, if this will uniformly scale an object. If you grab from one of the X, Y, or Z axis, um, it will uh, transform and scale uh, along that axis. Axis, rather. Uh, you'll also may have noticed that as I transform or scale or rotate, I'm sort of snapping along to a grid. Uh, to a grid, uh, that is an option which is available for all of the snap, rotate, or sorry, all of the rotate, move, and scale tools. You can choose to enable or disable snapping uh, accordingly. So here's uh, disabled, and here's enabled. Uh, so this is the movement. Uh, basically the uh, translate tool snapping. This is the rotate tool snapping, and this is the scale tool snapping right here. So right now, if I had this, for example, I could change the number of units that it snaps to. Let's do something big like 100 units. So now each snap will be 100 Unreal Engine units in distance. If I disable that, you can notice that I can move very precisely without any snapping at all. But if you want to set things along a fixed snapping grid, then this is the way to do so, and you can choose how big those snap sizes are. The same is true with rotating and with scaling. It's especially handy with rotating uh, because you oftentimes when you're rotating, you want it to be pretty precise along a certain amount of rotation. So being able to rotate by 10 degrees exactly is, is nice. It also means that if you rotate uh, and you want to rotate back, you, you can exactly get things to where they used to be without, uh, without having to futz around too much with exact measurements. You can, of course, affect the rotation, location, and scale of objects within the details panel, but we'll talk more about that later. For now, we're just going to talk about the viewport. Whilst you are within your viewport, you will also see some other options here. You can choose to have perspective view, which is the three-dimensional view. You can also top-down view. You can view from the left, the right, the front, the bottom, etc. Uh, if you click the little grid-looking window, you can actually split into four different windows, and then each one can have its own viewport, and you can work on multiple uh, directions at the same time if you want to. I don't do that much myself, but if you want to restore this back to the full size, all you need to do is click the little restore, and that will take up the full size of the viewport again. You may also notice the scalability high button right here. This will allow you to set the graphical resolution within your Unreal Engine editor. So for example, if we click on low, you can see that the graphics change. If we click on cinematic, the graphics will also change and improve the detail. Now that's pretty fast because there's not much to see in the scene right now, but if you have a lot of uh, trees and foliage and grass and various other things. Setting these might take quite a while to compile shaders the first time, so just be aware that it will initially run your project quite a bit slower until it actually creates all the shaders. Uh, but you can always, of course, set this uh, according to your computer uh, power, basically. You can turn certain options on, certain options off, 
Uh, you should be aware that these options affect your Unreal Engine editor. These are not saved into your game in any way. These are just how you're previewing within Unreal Engine editor. Another interesting option to be able to toggle on and off is your frames per second. And you can do that right here under this little three line icon. When you toggle on FPS, you'll see an FPS meter right over here. Uh, this FPS meter basically shows what you're looking at. So if, for example, I had a dense forest in front of me, the FPS might drop down to 30 FPS, but then as I pan down and look at the floor and there's nothing there, the FPS is going to jump right back up. The FPS basically registers whatever the viewport is looking at, and it gives you a gauge of how well optimized that particular area might be. Within the viewport editor, and we're just going to touch on this briefly, there is also the option to show or hide just a huge variety of different things. Now we're not gonna get into this, but you can basically turn on or off all sorts of different things. Like for example, if you want decals or sound, or, uh, sound effects icons or various other things to show, all of those options are gonna be available from the, uh, from the show menu. Usually I just leave this to default and that is usually fine. Uh, under lit, you have the option to uh, view the scene with lighting. You can also view the scene without any lighting. You can view it as a wireframe, and there are a number of other different viewing options that we will not touch on just yet, but just be aware that they are there and they exist. Uh, and I believe that basically covers our viewport. You can, of course, just kind of look around and see what other options like field of view and various other things are there. One other one you might find interesting actually is the immersive mode. And that is just the F11 key on your keyboard, which gives you a nice big full screen. So if you want to pretend like you're playing your game without actually simulating the game, uh, you can just press F11 and get things at big view. And that pretty much covers our viewport. There's, of course, more detail to it, but that should be enough for now. Let's jump into our next lesson. We're going to learn about the outliner. This lesson is from my Unreal Engine Beginners course. You can get access to the entire course on my Patreon page. All of my Patreons get full access to all of my courses. And I will be adding more courses and tutorials over time. Links in the description. Thank you for all the support.